Raw ratings on Monday night. Uh, this show died due to a monster competition from the uh, New England Patriots versus Buffalo Bills NFL game. Raw on Monday said it's all-time record low. An 0.35 rating in 18 to 49, which breaks the old record set on October 18th of 0.39. The old record was 0.39. This was 0.35. So they didn't barely break the old record low. They they easily, handily broke the old all-time record low. SmackDown and Rampage on Friday... Uh, also had a huge drop at 18 to 34, although with those shows, it was men. A raw collapse with men and women. It was back to the usual pattern, with more people watching hour one. The three-hour drop of 10% was not major itself. Well, that's because it was low. And to the over 50 audience, the show's largest by far being well above usual levels. Total audience of 1.60 uh, million was only the ninth lowest in history. That's the good news. They were only the ninth lowest in history in terms of overall viewers. The football game, 14.91 million viewers, a 4.49 at 18 to 49, and a 4.49 in 18 to 49. If you're wondering where those people were that weren't watching Raw, airings on ESPN and ESPN2. Raw was eighth in 18 to 49, trailing six NFL related shows on ESPN, below deck on Bravo. Women's audience, 18 to 49, being at record low, saw the show only finish 13th in women, 18 to 49, 7th in men, 18 to 49, 8th in 18 to 34, 10th in women, 12 to 34, and 8th in men, 12 to 34. Below Deck, remember that show, Below Deck? It uh, did 1.22 million and a .40 in 18 to 49. The first in a long time that an entertainment show on Monday has beaten Raw. 19th for the night in total viewers. So for those of you that think it's unfair to uh, classify them by 18 to 49, it should only be by total viewers. That would be bad for WWE if we ranked them by total viewers. It is better to rank them by 18 to 49. 10% first to third level drop. Blah, 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 blah. So anyway, uh, the first hour, 1.67. Second hour, 1.64. Third hour, 1.49. So here's the story of these numbers very quickly. It is an all-time record low. That is a horrible, horrible number at 18 to 49. But do you know what the good news is? And there is good news in this number. What's that? Well, the good news is they hit an all-time record low in 18 to 49 however the show was still eighth on cable so the point of this is there's going to come a time here where they're going to be uh, negotiating for a new television deal and uh, we're doing all-time record lows but the fact that a show that does the all-time all-time record low is still eighth on cable for the night uh, that suggests to me that they're not only going to be getting uh, what they were getting for this deal, but they're going to be getting more. And if anybody thinks otherwise, you're welcome to think otherwise. But the day is going to come, and they're going to get a big increase for their next television deal. And uh, facts like this are why. So there you go. Certainly would be better if they were doing better, but... Most certainly, but they're in a unique position. And we talk about it with Rampage. Is TNT, are Turner Networks happy with Rampage's performance? Belief is they are. They're very happy with it. Well, they would and have to be, because if you compare it to what the Friday night time slot was doing before Rampage, they were never in the top 50. Bingo. And what did this give? You know, when, when you include Major League Baseball in the summertime and hockey and basketball and Adult Swim on Cartoon Network, boy, Turner Networks has a really nice package that they can look at. And I'm not just saying a package because sports is a little bit different, you know, but it's like, you know, here is our late night. If you're between the ages of, of 18 and 49, if this is who you're targeting, we have those people. And you look at what, you know, how they can sell that. And you look at what kind of property AEW is for them. Well, obviously, that's what WWE is for USA. Now, will their relationship with Fox last the test of time? I don't know. But one thing that certainly has 
has has been their relationship with NBC Universal, and they are very happy, and they are in a unique spot in that sports is going to continue to drive as things change, as we go to more over the top services, as we see cable channels maybe disappearing, you know, and and you know, we see NBC Sports is our you know that's on the way out the door, you know what happens with True TV and you know other things, you know it just you don't know what the landscape is going to be, but sports is basically the safest thing you can have to, to drive viewers to your network. And, you know, even though we laugh when WWE positions itself that way, they absolutely can position themselves that way because they are a unique product and AEW can too. So, you know, yes, these ratings are terrible. This is horrible. and It's not a good look on the creative direction of the company when these numbers continue to happen. And we see these breakdowns as the show goes on that people just continue to tune out. But as far as it being a valuable property for TV, if you're a stockholder for WWE, at the end of the day, you shrug and you have nothing to worry about. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts. This match was, was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, ho, ho. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Danhausen. You know, Danhausen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Danhausen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.